There was nothing calm about Taylor Swift's reaction to this week's headline that the 29-year-old pop star's entire catalog of music was sold. But it's not just the sale that has her upset. It's the buyer, Scooter Braun, the high-profile manager behind artists like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, and once Kanye West. The Bad Blood singer calling it my worst case scenario, blasting Braun, who she alleges publicly bullied her along with Bieber and West. Just this weekend, it was announced that Braun acquired her former label, Big Machine, which owns so many of her deeply personal recordings for $300 million. In a passionate and unfiltered Tumblr post, Swift writing, my musical legacy is about to lie in the hands of someone who tried to dismantle it. Swift's emotional message spotlighting a debate about whether or not artists should own the rights to their music, something legends like Prince and Sir Paul McCartney have publicly grappled with. And while the pop princess is no stranger when it comes to controversy, her latest statement has ignited yet another public feud, this time with one of the music industry's most powerful players. This happens all the time, but because of Taylor's platform and her very heartfelt take on the situation, you know, she's raising her hands and saying, this is messed up. But before Taylor was Taylor, the fresh-faced teen met Scott Borchetta, who would sign her at just 14 years old as one of the first artists for his new label, Big Machine Records. Big Machine Records became a giant almost immediately thanks to Taylor. Just starting out, Taylor spoke to ABC as a freshman in high school. When I go through something, I have to write a song about it. I have to write a poem about it. Here's a reason for the teardrops on my guitar. It was teardrops on my guitar that first helped make her a household name. And his mama don't know our song is the way he lives. And through the years, country pop anthems like our song. And Love Story became the soundtrack of the teenage experience. It's a love story, baby, just say yes. Now worth more than a reported $300 million, she would go on to release five more albums with Big Machine until it seemed amicably parting ways with the label last November, signing with Republic Records and Universal Music Group, writing on Instagram, it's also incredibly exciting to know that I'll own all of my master recordings that I make from now on. But to really understand the background here, let's rewind a bit. It's 2009, Taylor is still country, Kanye isn't married to a Kardashian. Cut to this now infamous moment at the VMAs. I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. And thus, a celebrity feud is born. Fast forward to 2016, Kanye, at the time, repped by Braun, releases the song Famous, calling out Taylor by name. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why, I made that famous. Shortly after, Kanye's wife, Kim, posts this video to Snapchat, what seems like a conversation between her husband and the pop star. Yeah, I mean, what, don't put up a line, better. That keeping up with the Kardashian star speaking out on her show, defending so Kanye. Yeah, I'm just like speaking the truth. Like he called her, spoke to her. At the time, Swift fired back on Instagram, writing, I was never given the full story or played any part of the song. Going on to say, I would very much like to be excluded from this narrative, one that I have never asked to be a part of since 2009. Scooter Braun and Taylor have a history. Justin Bieber, who Scooter Braun manages, opened for Taylor a few times and things were all good until the feud between Kanye West, Kim Kardashian against Taylor Swift a couple of years ago, which was really a pretty ugly feud. After the news of the sale broke, Swift writing, all I could think about was the incessant, manipulative bullying I've received at his hands for years. Like when Kim Kardashian orchestrated an illegally recorded snippet of a phone call to be leaked, and then Scooter got his two clients together to bully me online about it. Swift referring to this photo of Braun, West, and Bieber that the Sorry singer posted with the caption, Taylor Swift, what up? Adding, this is Gooder Braun bullying me when I was at my lowest point. He's about to own all the music I ever made. 
Another point of contention, the songstress claims she wasn't given the opportunity to buy her music from Big Machine Records. But Scott Borchetta, who sold the label to Braun, says that's not the case, slamming back in a post of his own, writing, Taylor had every chance in the world to own not just her master recordings, but every video, photograph, everything associated to her career. She chose to leave and refuting Swift's claims that she was blindsided by the deal, stating that he personally texted Swift the night before to inform her prior to the story breaking. It's a very hot market to be buying and selling music assets. So usually it's a business decision and a buyer seller sees an opportunity and goes after it. The deal and the controversy splitting the entertainment industry down the middle. Coming to Braun's defense, Bieber himself apologizing to Swift for that post, but adding in part, Scooter has had your back since the days you graciously let me open up for you. For you to take it to social media and get people to hate on Scooter isn't fair. Adding, it was my caption and post, and that Braun told me not to joke like that. Sources close to Braun say no bullying happened. Perhaps the detail that's most confusing to many is that an artist as big as Swift doesn't own the rights to her masters. In a record deal, it's actually standard for the record label to own the master recordings because the company is the one putting up the money for that music to be recorded and promoted. So it's actually the exception when the artist owns the recordings and then licenses them to the label. What is more common is that sometimes artists will be able to buy back their masters from the record label. Artists like Rihanna, the We Found Love singer, according to Billboard, acquired the rights to her masters from Def Jam. And the late Nipsey Hussle rapped about music ownership on his album Victory Lap. Even music legends like Paul McCartney and Prince have publicly fought for the rights to their music. Back in the 90s, the Kiss singer adamantly fought his label for control of his music. At times, even writing slave on the side of his face, telling Rolling Stone, if you don't own your masters, your master owns you. In a lot of ways, the trailblazer for the modern concept of an artist owning their masters is Prince. He got out of his deal with Warner Brothers, he fulfilled the, the contract, and he went on to do a succession of one-off deals. Every time he'd release an album, it was a one-off whereby he owned the masters, he licensed it to a record company, and you have literally probably 20, 25 different <laughs> record companies putting out um, Prince records at various times. I promise that you'll never find another like me. Swift's upcoming album due out next month will be her first with her new album and the first she'll retain the masters to with singles like me. For Nightline, I'm Paula Ferris in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.